The decade's come to an end and has brought us a lot of great moments, a lot of great performances, and a lot of great players. And today we're going to be looking at all of them. And looking back at the past 10 years, and who or what's been the best from a wide variety of categories. There were some categories that I really wanted to include, but honestly they deserve their own video. And those categories are the best game of the decade, the best shot, rookie, most improved player, MVP, story, and the best trade. So just a heads up, I won't be talking about these here, because they'll all have their own videos coming up pretty soon. And it's alright because there's still a lot of great categories left. If you're excited for those videos though, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss them. Now let's get into this one. We've seen some of the best basketball players of all time show themselves to this decade. Guys like Giannis, Kawhi Leonard, and James Harden have all put on all-time performances, but they don't contend for player of the decade as much as guys like Steph Curry and Kevin Durant. Steph revolutionized the three-point shot and really blurred the line between what was a good shot and a bad shot and he had possibly the greatest individual season of all time in 2015 and 16. While Kevin Durant spent most of the decade being the second best player in the world and submitting his name as a top scorer of all time. But neither man in my opinion tops LeBron James for the best player of the 2010s, who spent a wide majority of them as being known as the best player in the world. Winning two MVPs, three championships, making nine all-star games, 13 all-NBA teams, nine all-NBA and four defensive, oh yeah and made eight straight NBA finals. And honestly it's hard to argue that anyone else deserves this spot. But speaking of some of the best players, let's look at the three all-decade teams while we're here. And keep in mind these teams don't have to have one player from every position, just two backcourt members and three frontcourt players. The all-decade first team belongs to Steph Curry, James Harden, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, and Kawhi Leonard. And these were all easy choices where you can't really argue that any of the players here don't deserve to be, and I don't need to explain why. The All-Decade second team goes to Chris Paul, Russell Westbrook, Giannis, Anthony Davis, and Blake Griffin. In the NBA's All-Decade list that they put out, they had Carmelo Anthony in place of Giannis here, and to be honest, that's flat out a terrible decision. Giannis won an MVP and has developed into the most dominant player in the NBA over the second half of this decade, which is much more than Melo did for the entire past 10 years. Plus, spoiler alert, I don't even have Carmelo on the third team either. By now, I think everyone can agree that he was overrated in his time in New York, and it's very clear. He spent his first seven years of the decade on the Knicks, made the playoffs only three times, and only won a single series. That's not a guy that deserves to be on an all-NBA team, just because he was a good scorer. Then Blake Griffin had to make this squad, because he's put up over 20 a game nearly every single season, was the top power forward in the league for a couple of years, and played his part in some serious playoff runs with the Clippers. Then the All-Decade third team is where things get kinda messy, with Dwayne Wade, Kobe Bryant, Draymond Green, Paul George, and Dirk Nowitzki. And here's where I have to back up every selection on the list. D-Wade because he played a huge part as a second option in Miami's and LeBron's two championships in 2012 and 13, as well as had a few solid years after he left. Kobe was a tough one because while he had a strong start to the decade, winning a championship, making four All-NBA teams, and had four seasons scoring over 25 a game, honestly the last three years of his career were terrible and he hurt the team way more than he helped them. The person I almost swapped him out for was Klay Thompson, but I just couldn't put him over Kobe who led his team to their last title. Draymond Green makes it because while many people say he's overrated, don't forget he also helped his team win three championships. While winning the Defensive Player of the Year once, he led the league in steals and made an all-defensive team five times. Paul George is here for obvious reasons. Then the last spot was between Dirk and Tim Duncan. Both won redemption championships against the Heat. The only difference was Dirk led his team to theirs, winning finals MVP, while Duncan played as a second or even third option. I also saw comments on other videos saying Dwight Howard should have been included or even mentioned on one of these teams, but only two of his Orlando Magic years were in this decade. And as we know, after that, things kind of fell apart for him. And by buzzer beater, we're not talking just a shot that ended up being a game winner. We're talking a shot that goes in as the clock hits zero. And Damian Lillard shares two of the biggest from this decade. The first was to close out the Rockets, and the second was from 37 feet to close out the Thunder and eventually break up their team. And both of those were great. Personally, just from a pure shot standpoint, I'd say his against OKC was the best. But for the fact that Kawhi Leonard's shot bounced around the rim, gave the picture perfect photo, and it would eventually lead to the Raptors becoming NBA champions, it has the bigger overall impact looking back, so I think it takes the spot for the best buzzer beater. 
the spot for best passer is up for debate between either Russell Westbrook, Chris Paul, or Rajon Rondo. Russ has led the league in assists twice this decade and leads the past 10 years as a whole with right around 6,462 assists. CP3 also led the league twice and is in second, while Rajon Rondo led the NBA three times in passes leading to scoring, with a good gap behind them in third place for the decade. And even though Rajon is mostly known for his passing ability, he wasn't always on great teams. And Westbrook didn't garner that many assists until his last few years on the Thunder, and by that point the team wasn't great, and that style didn't always lead the team to wins. But Chris Paul's assists always were impactful and were done to lead his teammates to being better and helping lead the team to wins. So I'm giving him the spot for the best passer. Then both Dwight Howard and DeAndre Jordan are close contenders in the race for best rebounder of the 2010s. They averaged double digit rebounding numbers in nearly all of the 10 seasons. They led the NBA for the decade and both have had multiple seasons averaging over 14 rebounds a game. It's a close comparison between the two but it doesn't even matter because Andre Drummond beats them both out for the spot. The man's in third place for rebounds this decade and didn't even play in the first two and a half seasons of it. He's averaged at least 13 a game in every season but one, averaged 16 a game two seasons ago, 15 a game last year, which makes three seasons where he led the league, and is averaging 16 a game now to end out the decade. These are numbers we haven't seen consistently by anybody since Dennis Rodman in the 90s. In the past 10 seasons, there's been three players that have won the Defensive Player Award more than once, and those are the three we're focusing on. Rudy Gobert, Dwight Howard, and Kawhi Leonard. Gobert's been a great shot blocker since he came into the league, but has really been the centerpiece for Utah on that end the past two seasons, which was what won him the past two awards. Dwight Howard was one of the most dominant defensive presences we've ever seen, and won the award three times in a row, but only two were counted. After his last one though, that dominance really diminished ever since he left the Magic early on in 2012. So Dwight dominated early in the decade and Gobert's been great to end it. But Kawhi Leonard's been solid throughout, really breaking out on that end in 2014 when he guarded LeBron in the finals better than any player has, which led him to winning finals MVP. He then won the award the next two seasons and since then has excelled at guarding everyone from Kevin Durant and Steph Curry to putting a stop to Giannis in these past playoffs. So I'd say for his longevity so far, versatility to guard the 1 through the 4, and just how great he's been in general, Kawhi is easily the defender of the decade. We started the 2010s off with guys like Jamal Crawford, Lamar Odom, and James Harden as the 6th men of the year, and have ended things off with Lou Williams. In between that time, Jamal and Lou have both won 3 awards, and made their own cases for greatest 6 men of all time. And both Williams and Crawford played solid all decade, but have mainly had 5 year stretches of greatness. Jamal's was from 2012 to 17 in LA, and Lou's in the middle of his right now for the Clippers. I think it's an easy choice though to see that Williams has had overall the much bigger impact, and has really been taking over recently, with the title of the best 6 man over the past 10 years. The title for the best coach is an easy one. There's been a lot of great ones in recent memory, but there's just no competition for Greg Popovich. He's, in some people's mind, the greatest coach of all time, and really brings out the best in all of his players. Up until recently, the Spurs have had one of the best records in the NBA every single season. Haven't missed the playoffs in 22 years, and he led his team to almost two championships. And it's another no contest here. The best team has obviously been the Warriors. More specifically, the best single season team was the 2016 and 17 Warriors. The 73 and 19 were great, but they didn't win the championship. The 2017 and 18 team was also just as good as the previous year's team. They had all the same players and everything, but not the same drive as they did in 2016. And that's proven because in 2016 and 17, Durant had just joined the team and they were ready to do two things. Show how dominant they really were with KD and make up for losing in the previous year's finals. And they even finished with a 67 and 15 record. Plus, they successfully did both the things they set out to do. There's no doubt that this iteration of the Warriors was one of the most annoying ever, but it's also hard to argue that this isn't the greatest team ever assembled. Without a doubt, the best NBA Finals was the previously mentioned from 2016. Not only did LeBron and company take down the 73-9 Golden State Warriors, but they came back from being down 3-1 to to do so. Closed the series out with some unbelievable moments, and finally helped James fulfill his promise by bringing a championship to Cleveland, in what's been considered by a lot of people to be the greatest story in sports history. The runner-ups though would definitely have to be the 2011 Finals won by the Mavs, or the 2013 title by the Heat with Ray Allen's shot. 
Steph Curry. A league high 43.5% from three over the decade, over 11 attempts a game in his best season, a countless amount of all-time records, and leads the NBA with over 2,400 three-pointers within that time. And this one's also Steph who was the only player to shoot above 90% for the entire 10 year span and beat out the second place JJ Redick and Dirk Nowitzki by 1.2%. This one is both the overall highest field goal percentage combined with the highest two point percentage because it goes to DeAndre Jordan who's pretty much never shot a three pointer let alone a mid range shot. And that's helped him lead this category by a huge margin. He averaged 67% from the field and was the only player to even average over 60% with Dwight Howard coming in second with 59.2. He hasn't been the same player in the past few years but let's not forget about just how efficient he was in his Clippers days where he had three consecutive seasons averaging over 70%. He honestly didn't have that many attempts, but that number is still impressive. The leader for steals without question goes to CP3. He led the league for four straight seasons at one point and obviously leads the decade. And that played a big part in what led him to making six straight all defensive first teams starting in 2010. Surprisingly, the man that blocked the most shots in 2010 is Serge Ibaka, the guy who really stopped being a real shot blocker in 2015. He easily was the most dominant of the decade though, blocking 3.7 shots a game in 2011 and 12. So without much other competition, he deserves the title of the best shot blocker. And finally, the best scorer could go a couple of different ways here, because LeBron James leads the way with the most points over the past 10 years, followed closely by KD and James Harden. And both KD and LeBron have remained extremely consistent, both averaging at least 25 points a game every season of the past 10 years, while Harden's done the same for 8 out of the 10. And KD has 4 scoring titles this decade, Harden has 2, and LeBron has 0. So it's clear that the real race here is between Durant and Harden. But even though Harden's been playing insane the past few seasons, I'm still giving this one to KD. It's a close matchup, but Durant takes less shot attempts and is just much more efficient from the 2, the 3, and the free throw line. And that's all we have for the decade video. But like I said to start the video, if you want to see all the other best of the decade categories with their own videos, subscribe so you don't miss them, drop a like if you enjoyed this one, and I'll catch you next video.